arms. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. What does Lynn Tapia have to do to pull off the upset? A little bit dry, but oh, the more importantly is Tapia straight up as been outside and pulls straight back. The problem with Tapia is the jab can be a good weapon for the opponent. The fact that he's got more lateral movement and the, uh, a more impressive toolkit and... And it was set up off the jab. For me to believe in Quigley, he should be able to do that power. But we'll see if he can. Time, stop punching. Stop yet. He exposes himself. He, well, actually, he went to throw the right uppercut. Left hand was not up. Goes to throw that. Quigley stayed in tight. A bit groggy because he's getting hit with some solid punches. I mean, maybe they're not one. They're not. Jason Quigley maybe trying to finish him here. He needs to take his time, right, Bihar? Well, look, we got a man who well, like needs, no, needs to finish take it. One thing he doesn't have in his corner is Freddie Roach. He didn't work with him for this fight. And Freddie, Freddie, of course, is one of the premier trainers. For him. That's where his bread is buttered. And Tappy uh, figured, hey, I stay home and I train at home. Big right there. And the one thing you can't teach me. He's getting nailed by Jason with shots like this. Nice combination there. Left hook up top and the left hook downstairs. That's what we haven't seen all night. In any of the fights, this combination punching that Jason Quinn and we put him to the Hall of Fame. Let's calm down a little bit. He's got his heavy bag right now. But I'm and no, no knock on him, but that's what's going on right now. And Quigley should be doing these things. Too, too easy for him right now. He's taking his time. Oh, body Here's shot. The body shot. Oh, him again. There yeah, could have been a right trip there. there, but there was actually a shot. But my God, you better be calm after 250 amateur fights. Are you kidding me? Otherwise, you should go in the corner. There's a touch there. Else. And a check corner. So it's not the first time we see those feet. Jack Reese, as you mentioned, is one of the... Tapia is going to be desperate now because what? When the referee or the commission comes to your corner, they're looking at you. He's not steady here, Teddy. Well, because you're going to walk right into the blade. I mean, really, he's going to walk into the propeller of the plane. And his punch is a little wide. And Quigley's punch oh. is a little straight. But Although he did land a yes. good one there. What we talked about, Len Tapia has 15 knockouts in 23 fights. And now they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring. Behind that really matter with Tapia. One's, first of all, to his point, Bernard's point, the legs are parallel. Look at the legs yes. of Tapia. That means he's response, because I think that he's going to the head so much when he's head hunting. But to your point... Let him out, Jason. Let him out of there, fellas. Because he is not calm enough quite yet after coming out there and hurting the guy. That's working against him a little bit now. There he goes. The the body shot says. And almost in enough. But I'll tell you something, the job. But I'll tell you something that quickly is doing. Showing that he's not, even though he's dominant, not quite a pro at that level yet. Tapia, they don't want him to get hurt. Down here, yes. Bernardo, this round here is going to sh down and show that you know I'm here to stay and I'm going to be involved and I'm going to win this fight. Well, I see a distinct little adjustment here this round. Oh, big right by Tapia. A yeah, little adjustment by Quigley early on, trying to control to get Tapia to walk into something. The leaders with Tapia reaching in a little bit where he can score such a throw. Yes. A, a lot of energy shots open. And let me tell you, it's changed a little bit. Now we see the combination punch because he's feeling now something different. Oh. He is looking to take advantage of and has this round. Round four comes to an end. Time. He script. We hear about that sometimes. Tapia flipped his script a little bit that round. I talked about it earlier that, you know, Quigley won the battle those three rounds in a row that he took. But a lot of it is he losing the war for the top guy yet. And right now, he's getting asked to behave like a pro. And he's getting caught. And Glenn Tapia is getting hit with that right hand. Even easy fight. I mean, Glenn Tapia came to fight. Oh, and now he's getting he him coming in. He he may become a pro, but he's not a pro yet. But the confidence, nothing philosophical. It is corner. It's, happened. it's about caveman stuff. <laughs> right now, it's about caveman stuff. Yep. It's an alley fight, and somebody was doing And listen, I'm forward. a witness. You were here. You were right here. We're going to listen in. To stop punching, stop. 
Philadelphia. No, he listens to Bernard's point. Having that left hand left out there. Empty oh. two left hand. All right, now they're just standing toe to toe. And fight. Quinley is not using his range. Yep. Teddy mentioned it earlier in the fight. He's not using his range. Keep him at bay and then force him to make mistakes. Not go into the pocket where you're going to allow Tapia to be able to fight what I'm saying tonight. He wasn't a pro yet. I thought the fight was going to help him get towards that, but he's not like a pro. He showed me he still had somewhere to go. He's showing that again. He's not faltering tonight and a little vulnerable to judges as this has been a very even fight, especially after Glenn Tapia has been coming on in the last three rounds. We've got a break. Hey, stop we'll punching! And his son has become a good trainer. Yeah. Come out, you know, they start singing the songs like they do in a soccer game, and you have a good crowd again with that kind of atmosphere representing Quigley here tonight, but not going the way the crowd expected it to go. 1800, come forward. And then now we see the cut, Teddy, yeah. as I get in here. Because he's throwing every other punch, but he's not oh. throwing a punch that really matters in about his physical exhaustion from that third, first three rounds. There's a little bit of a to let your emotions get the better of you. You don't see, you don't see it because pressure is coming on him. Oh, Tapia. big right hand there. It's tired. And, and I'm not knocking his condition. I don't know what his condition is. I think part of straight right hand is an overhand right. Sort of like a hook right. And it caught him right on the chin. To get more mileage out of that yeah, place right, right now. He's in a place where he's panicking a little bit. He's a little bit. He's not a pro yet. Now, Teddy, both guys are taking a lot. Listen, I'm going to tell you my scorecard right here. 57, Tappy is 66. It has to be going to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Oh, These big counter play. there from Buddy Hop. You mentioned it. It's going to be in a position to maybe finish this fight. You give someone like Tappy with a little less skills, oh. and I'll quickly start to get the better of it. Now, big right hands, and that'll Literally big, Teddy and Bernard coming out showing that he really wanted to go two rounds to make something happen. Listen, I'm as much as anybody an advocate for looking out for the fighter, more than most people, to hear that. I mean, you got Tapia right in the middle of the step. He's testing him. He's taking him into do going to stop it. I mean, understand what it is. And you got a guy like Tapia, yeah, who's been in the ring so many more times than Quigley. Complete 10 round fighter yet. And that's all the reason Glenn Tapia should be all bars out. He should be right now throwing punches and not staying out there getting off box, which he is right now. All right. Round stop, 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 stop. Let's stay in the corner of Glenn Tapia. They up here. his daughter, Isabella. But they're not choosing to take the choice. I think the right choice to try to win. And that's what he's doing right now, Teddy. He's throwing punches. He's not winning his fight. Advising him to retire. And he said, I still have something left in the tank. And Teddy, he's proven this tonight. He's still in position. Let's settle down. But both guys showed skill set. Both guys showed me something. Talked about early, but not one of the most important things my responsibility as a trainer is to help a fighter find his ID. Yeah. Who he is. He's got to find quickly. He's got to find his ID. And I think his ID is to control the outside. Not... And, he, and he's, he can box, and sometimes he should lose those. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Us that this series would be about putting their prospects to the test. Their face, Joe Martinez, with the official scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Carla Caiz has it 100 to 90. Zach Young, 99-91. And Max DeLuca has it 98-92, all for your winner by unanimous decision. He is a new NABF middleweight champion and still undefeated, the Irish-born Elani Ma, Jason Quigley! You know, maybe these judges should take a few punches and get in the ring and take a few yeah, boxes and get hit a couple times. That's and maybe cool. they would have more...